All right, folks, here's a look at the finished painting and some close-ups. So let's get into how I painted this in oil paint. So I'm starting out with the 6x8 canvas panel. Just a small little panel. These are a nice size to use, especially if you're doing some plain air painting. Really great size to carry around and uh, just to get a nice sketch down, really simplified type of sketch. So I toned it with ivory black using some paint thinner, so it created a gray, nice little gray color. I let that dry for a few days. It, really, you don't even have to let it dry, um, but I, I did a bunch of panels at once, so I let them dry over a few days, and then I just started painting on them. And I like using, um, this is a small, I believe it's a number four filbert brush, so a little small brush here, just to plan out the composition, the sketch. And I'm using a reference photo from a Redwood Forest that I, one of my favorite Redwood Forests that I go to from time to time. And I'm using transparent red oxide paint, or if you use Gamblin, I believe it's called transparent red earth. It doesn't really matter, just some kind of brown color. A lot of artists use red as their sketch. Um, you can use burnt umber. You know, it's really just personal preference at this stage. You can do whatever you want. I'm using the paint in kind of a dry brushing technique, um, which can, you know, sometimes it's not a good idea to do that because the paint can be a little bit thicker. And when you go to paint, paint on top of this, it's going to bleed a little bit. But this scene is just a forest with trees and dirt, so it's mostly brown anyway. So that's kind of why I do that. But mostly for the sketch stage, you want to use a little bit of paint thinner to thin the paint down. And that way, um, that way it dries quickly. And when you go to paint on top of it, I use paint straight from the tube. I don't use any mediums with my oil paint. I found a brand of paint that I really love and I love the consistency of it. And I use it straight from the tube and there's no need for me to thin it down with mediums or um, add any oils to it or anything like that. So when I, when I paint on top of a thin down layer, I'm already creating that, the fat over lean technique, but, um, I already do a la prima anyway. So I paint it all in one go for the most part, uh, for most of my paintings for this one, I painted it in about an hour and 15 minutes. So before this painting, I, I looked at the photo reference and I just mixed up the main colors that I'm going to use, you know, the browns of the trees, the shadows, the darkest dark, the lightest light, the greenery, um, the shadow, basically you mix up all the shadow colors, all the light colors, and, um, and then the accents, the darkest color, the lightest color, basically. So I mixed up some uh, nice piles of paint and now I just spend my time putting it on and, you know, making little adjustments here and there as I paint and go on, create some variation. So when I, when I do that, I'm able to, it defines the color harmony right at the beginning, basically. It saves me a lot of time as I'm painting because then I can just clean the brush and then jump into another color. And like I said, as I'm going along, I'm just mixing up slight variations. So I'll make some things a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. And I think the palette that I used for this, I used uh, titanium white, cadmium yellow lemon, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Transparent Red Oxide. So a very limited palette. So a red, yellow, blue with just a brown. And, uh, you know, with this painting, I'm really focusing on the light effects. So you can see I put the shadows down first. I did the darkest darks, and then I moved to the shadow tones. And now I'm starting to move into the mid-tones. So the mid-tones are kind of, it's very tricky to define mid-tones. They're basically almost in light. Um, you know, they're just barely in the light. It's their transition between the light and shadow, basically. So that's what I put down on the canvas there, basically marking out my light areas on the canvas. And I'm slowly working my way up to brighter values. So you can see even the midtones there, pretty dark, pretty dark, rich red color very natural looking and now I'm, I'm uh, working on some rock shapes and I had a little bit of trouble with this because I, I always have trouble with rocks or leaves or something that, that has where there's a lot of different shapes happening and 
what I tried to do was simply vary the color here as I'm going along. And I'm probably using a brush that's too small. I, I really should have, what I'm trying to do is group all these together. And then I'm just gonna use simple uh, value shifts, subtle value shifts, and also temperature shifts. See right there, a little bit of value shifts showing some reflected light. And I'm trying to def define different planes, different angles and stuff showing different rocks. So for me, this was very tricky for me. It's always difficult. And I, you can't really match the reference photo exactly because there's just so many rocks. There's so many things going on. And you have to really, you know, for me, I wanted to simplify it. I needed to simplify it. But you can see that the rocks closer to the top are the ones closer to the light. So I kind of lighten them up because they're almost in the light. I think some of the rocks were. And then the other rocks are very blue in reflected light and shadow. So I'm creating already, you can see on the canvas now, there's a big temperature shift between the warmth of the trees and the surrounding areas and those rocks, the greenish blue rocks. Big temperature shift there. And that's really my main focus is, is getting these different temperatures and, and locating, uh, you know, just the, the shifts in the painting, whether it's subtle value changes, color changes, or temperature, which is basically just color change. But also I'm doing it with the greens in the background as well. You can see that middle green that I'm working on now. Uh, that area is much lighter than the other greens. So toward the center of the canvas, I have a lighter, warmer green, and then as the, it moves to the edges of the canvas, I have darker, cooler greens. So already it's just helping the composition. It's creating that light effect and uh, creating that temperature effect, which creates a warm light with cool shadows. And that's what happens generally out of nature. You're gonna have warm light and cool shadows. Um, basically cool, you're gonna have cool reflected light, um, which is gonna make the shadows cooler out of nature because you have the blue sky coming down. We can get into all that in a different video. There's a lot happening out of nature um, as far as light. And the area I'm working on now, this is a very tricky, it was kind of tricky for me as I was painting this. This There's a small creek flowing through these rocks, through these trees, and down to the bottom of the canvas. So what I'm painting right now is a reflection of the greenery above it, um, of the greenery behind the trees there. It's reflecting down into the creek. But the tricky part is getting the edges correct. You can see I, I didn't really work too much on the creek there. I just kind of filled the canvas there. I'm trying to just cover the canvas uh, for this blocking in stage. So now I'm working on the lights. You can see they're really lightened up. Went over those mid-tones. You know, I didn't wait for any layer. There's no layers on this that are drying. Those first layers on the canvas, you know, I'm painting like I said, paint is just straight from the tube. So anything I put on top is just going to blend into it. So I just went and lightened up those light areas and left some of the areas to be mid-tones uh, beneath it. So I'm just focusing on that light effect in the forest there, this dappled kind of light effect. And I start off with the value a little bit darker than I think that I'm going to get up to. You know, I'm, I'm creating subtle value changes. So I use kind of that light brown as the light. And then for the midtones, it's kind of this red brown. So I put that red brown down first um, in a larger area and then use the light brown to kind of add highlights on top of that in a smaller area. So it creates this kind of soft, subtle transition of lighting effect. 
And then now moving on to kind of some light, light areas on the rocks. So working the whole painting basically, starting out dark and then moving to these lightest lights. And then if I need to, I can go back and add some shadows. You know, if I painted too much light, I can go back and add shadows. Some, some of the darkest dark as I'm putting it now on the rocks. Adding in some of the darkest darks there. Trying to create some separation between the rocks. Just suggesting, you know, shapes, rock shapes. So you can see there, I'm really taking my time with these rocks and like, you know, I'm not just like putting marks everywhere. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm t taking a minute, looking at it and then putting some paint down, you know, trying to really focus on it. And now I'm going back in, I think with some lighter values now, restating some of the lighter value so sometimes you have to just work this light and dark back and forth you know it just depends on uh, how difficult the subject is but sometimes you have to play with it a little bit and sometimes you have to scrape it off completely wipe it out and just start over you know start over on a little spot i mean this sometimes that's how it goes man but you can't worry about it too much. You just have to realize that what you did first was a mistake and you have to do something different. All right, so now I'm working more on this foreground because I feel like I have the, the background and kind of the top of the canvas and the middle of the canvas established. So I need to, I need to figure out this creek and this foreground. I need to figure out what's going on here. I think there's some rocks there in the foreground and there's some kind of plant life plant matter happening there and a little bit of uh on the right side yeah right where i'm painting now there's some some water and, and reflections and that's that's a little bit tricky because i have to pay attention to the edges here and uh really make these edges soft to show that it's reflections compared to the rest of the painting all these edges have to be much softer and this is tricky because you have to really get the value right. And that's what's uh, difficult for me. All right, it, it can be difficult. I feel like water is water and like reflections on water. Like if you're looking into a river or something and you're seeing, um, you're seeing the bottom of the river, but you're also seeing reflections on top of the river. I mean, that can be very tricky to paint. And I, th I think that's where we kind of get caught up. A lot of artists get caught up in like how to render water and stuff. I really want to do more studies of like rivers and rocks and transparent water and stuff. I want to do more studies of that because I feel it's it's a weak spot in my uh, in my paintings. But again, it's it's really just getting the values and color right and edges, but it's mostly it's color and values because if you just get the shapes and the colors and the values right it doesn't matter what you're painting it doesn't matter if it's water reflections or a, a river bed at the bottom of the river you know none of that really matters it's, it's just getting the shapes and the value correct you know the color really doesn't even matter but yeah I think I, I need to get out and uh, study that a little bit more but you know, it's it's finding these weaknesses in your own work. You know, figure out like what most people know what their weaknesses are. Like they're weak in drawing, or they're weak in composition, or brushwork, or something. Then focus on that. You know, focus on strengthening that. You know, if you feel that you can improve in that, I think we all can. But 
you know, maybe another way to think of it is, is focus on only your strengths and just double down on making your strengths stronger. But, you know, I like focusing on my weaknesses and really trying to make those stronger. But anyway, we're about into the, into the painting here. I think it came out pretty well. I'm just going to sign it and we'll take one last look at the final painting here and some close-ups. Hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other tutorial videos for drawing and painting. Also subscribe to see future episodes. Peace.